The nation of Lao, officially called the Lao People's Democratic Republic, is situated in Southeast Asia, nestled amongst Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, and China. The country covers an area slightly larger than Great Britain and is home to over 5 million people. Like its neighbors Vietnam and Cambodia, Lao is known for its tragic and turbulent past. From 1964 to 1973, to prevent communist pro-Vietnamese forces from gaining control of the country, the United States dropped over two million tons of bombs on Laos. It remains the most heavily bombed country per head of population in the history of warfare. Bomb craters remain visible and unexploded ordnance litters the countryside, particularly around the Plain of Jars area in the northeast of the country. It's believed that over 350,000 Laotians were killed in the American raids. The war in Laos has left a legacy of poverty and underdevelopment. Unsurprisingly, sporting pursuits are not high on the list of priorities here. However, that's not to say that this impoverished land is a sporting black hole, as we found out on our visit to the country back in March 2008. One of the most popular sports in the country is the martial art of Muay Lao. Muay Lao is a style of kickboxing which utilizes hands, feet, elbows and knees, as well as stand-up grappling. This sport is practiced throughout Southeast Asia and is known by a variety of names depending on which country you're in. For example, in Thailand it's called Muay Thai, whilst in Cambodia it's referred to as Pradal Sere. In Laos, the capital city of Vientiane is the sport's stronghold. Back in 2008, there were three Muay Lao clubs here, with the most well-known and respected being the Lad Semi Club. It was based in the south of the city, in the village of Ban Sokam, and was established in 1998 by one of Laos' greatest ever fighters. A good fighter has to possess a number of different qualities. Most importantly, you need to have what I term a fighting spirit. You also need stamina, confidence and quick reflexes. Then, of course, there is the obvious quality of strength. Really good fighters can hit hard and deliver knockout blows with either their fists, elbows, knees or feet. Poma Sundala had trained many national champions who had gone on to compete for Lao in international competitions. Back when we visited, one of the leading fighters in Sundala's stable was Thomas Panith. Thomas is certainly a great fighter. With my hands on my heart, I'm sure that one day he'll be a national champion. Since I've been working with him, he's developed a lot. I believe that he's good enough to represent our nation at the Sea Games, for example. And that is our goal. Thomas hailed from Champasak in the south of Lao. He made the move to Vencian in order to train with renowned coach Sundala. When I was growing up, I used to always watch the Muay Lao fights that were shown on television. And from a young age, I decided that I wanted to be a fighter. I used to see the great champions with the trophies and the money. And I said to myself, that's what I'd like to do. I had my first fight when I was eight, and it all started from there. In Laos, there remain only a handful of professional kickboxers compared to around 60,000 in Thailand. Nobody at the Lad Semi Club was a professional. Poma was a builder by trade and Thomas a student. The two-hour training sessions took place before and after the working day. There's little money invested in this sport by the Lao authorities and there are hardly any sponsors. The Lat Semi Club was funded solely by Poma and his friends. 
young fighters like Thomas were provided with accommodation and food by their coach. I teach these youngsters not only about fighting, but also about life. I've become a father figure to many of them. I don't want them to get involved in bad things like smoking dope, taking opium or drinking heavily. I tell them that's not the way to live their lives. These kids who come to me are doing something positive. I'd rather see them get involved in sports like ours or football or sepak takro than get mixed up with bad things. He's taught me and the others so much. We're like one big family here. After I'm finished fighting, I also want to set up my own club and train the next generation because this sport is an important part of Lao culture. As part of the selection process for the national team, Wai Lao competitions were held every Saturday evening in Benchian. The bouts gave the selectors the opportunity to assess some of the emerging fighters. On the day that Transworld Sport was in town, Thomas was headlining the bill at the Sok Sai ring in downtown Benchian. <laughs> There are eight fights on tonight's bill, and Thomas's is the main one. I've told him that he needs to be aggressive and stronger with his knees. The venue is a great place to fight, and I hope that the crowd gets behind him. But for that to happen, he has to perform well. I think he'll do well, and he should win the fight. Around 250 people turned up for the evening's entertainment and the fights were broadcast live on national television. The minimum age to fight at this venue was 10. However, in contests at village fates throughout Laos, children as young as eight still take to the ring. In Wai Lao, the bouts are scheduled for five rounds, with each round lasting three minutes. Coach Sundala had three of his fighters on this bill, and his first two both won their contests. <laughs> Thomas's chances of making it three out of three were dealt a blow when, shortly before his fight, he was informed that his original opponent had to pull out. A replacement was drafted in, but there was a slight problem. His new challenger was not in Thomas's 54 kilogram weight division. Instead, he was a 60 kilo fighter. To his credit, Thomas agreed to the matchup, believing that it would provide the stern test that he was looking for. Sakao Saw so Lassing was not only heavier and older, but was also an established member of the Lao national team. Thomas gamely took the fight to him, and the grueling encounter in the hot and humid venue went the distance. Clash was judged to be the best fight of the evening, and as a reward for their efforts, both men were given a hundred thousand kip, around ten dollars. Saw La Singh was awarded the win by the judges, but it was the youngster from the Lab Semi Club who ended up with most of the plaudits, thanks to his courageous performance.